In this video, we're going to look at the highest common factor and the lowest common multiple. Let's start with the highest common factor. I'm going to take two numbers and I'll take 6 and 8. We might be asked to find the highest common factor of 6 and 8. The highest common factor of these two numbers is the largest number that's going to go into both. The way we can do this is to write out the factors of both numbers. The factors are the numbers that are going to go into 6 and 8. So if we look at 6, the factors are 1, 2, 3 and 6. These are all of the numbers that go into 6 without a remainder. If we look at 8, 1, 2, 4 and 8. To find the highest common factor, we look in both lists and we look for the largest number that appears in both lists. We can see that's 2, so we can say that the highest common factor or the largest number that goes into both 6 and 8 is going to be 2. Let's take two more numbers. We will have 12 and 20. So with this one, we want to now find the highest common factor. An easier way to do this is to list out the factors of 12. The factors of 12 are 1, 2, 3, 4, 6 and 12. The way I've done that now is to do 1 times by 12, 2 times by 6 and 3 times by 4. If I go to 4, I'm going to get 4 times by 3. There is a video on finding the factors of a number on the channel. I now say to myself, which of these numbers is going to go into 20? Does 12 go into 20 without a remainder? The answer is no. Does 6 go into 20 without a remainder? No. Does 4? Yes, it does. So the highest common factor of 12 and 20 is 4. I could have listed the factors 1, 2, 4, 5, 10 and 20 and looked along the list for the highest number and we could see it's going to be 4. So that's finding the highest common factor now of two numbers. We might have another number. We might have 30, for example, added to the list. So 12, 20 and 30. If I list out the factors of the smallest one, we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 6 and 12. I say to myself, does 12 go into 20 and 30? The answer is it goes into neither without a remainder. 6 doesn't go into 20, so that's not going to be the highest common factor. It does go into 30, but it needs to go into more. 4 goes into 20, but it doesn't go into 30 without a remainder. 3 doesn't go into 20, so we're down to 2. Does 2 go into 20? Yes, it does. Does 2 go into 30? Yes, it does. Alternatively, you could have listed the factors of 30. So that's the highest common factor. It's the largest number that will go into two or more numbers. What we're now going to look at is the lowest common multiple. The lowest common multiple is the first number that these two or more numbers will go into. So let's take 6 and 8 again. If we think about now the multiples of 6 or the 6 times table, 6, 12, 18, 24, 30, 36, and so on and so forth. If we look at the multiples of 8, 8, 16, 24, we're going to have 32, we're going to have 40, and so on and so forth. We can see that the first number that appears in both lists is going to be 24. That gives us the lowest common multiple. It's the first number that 6 and 8 go into. If we look at 12 and 20, so 12 and 20, one way we could do this is to write out now the multiples of 20. So 20, we'd have 40, 60, we'd have 80, and so on and so forth. Does 12 go into 20? without a remainder? The answer is no. Does it go into 40 without a remainder? The answer is no. Does it go into 60 without a remainder? Yes, it does. That gives us, it goes in five times. So the lowest common multiple is 60. Alternatively, you could just list out the multiples of 12. 12, 24, 36, 48, 60, 72. We can see the lowest common multiple is 60. It's the first number that both of these will go into. So there's a nice manual way of finding the highest common factor and the lowest common multiple of small numbers. 
What we're now going to look at are some more tricky examples when the numbers are slightly bigger and harder to deal with. So what we're going to do is start now by looking at the highest common factor of, and we'll take 36 and 42. The method I'm going to use here, in, well, I would say, um, is based on the fact that you should know how to do prime factoring. If you don't, um, then go and watch a video on it as this one particularly relies on it. So what we're going to do is prime factor 36. So writing 36 as a product of its prime factors, we can divide that by the first prime number, which is 2. That leaves me 18. I can divide that by 2. That leaves me 9. I can divide this by 3, and that leaves me 3. So as a product of prime factors, we can write that 36 is going to be now 2 times by 2 times by 3 times by 3, or we could write 2 squared times by 3 squared. If I now prime factorise 42, 42 we can divide by 2, that gives me 21. I can divide that by 3, and that gives me 7. So we can say now that this is going to be 2 times by 3 times by 7. So exactly the same this side, 2 times by 3 times by 7. To find the highest common factor here, we look at the two lists and we take each number that appears in both lists. So we can see that we're only going to have 2 and 3. 7 doesn't appear in the first list, so I'm going to multiply these. We must take each of these to the lowest power. So I've got 2 to the power of 1 and 2 to the power of 2. So I choose 2 to the power of 1. I've got 3 to the power of 1 or 3 to the power of 2. So I choose 3 to the power of 1. And that is simply going to give me 6. So the, uh, the highest common factor of the 36 and 42 is going to give me 6. An alternative way of looking at it now is to say to yourself at this stage, and we'll just highlight these, with a small list, 2 and 2 would go together. I've not got another 2 to pair up here. I can pair the 3 with this 3. I can't pair this 3 and I can't pair this 7, so it's just 2 times by 3. That's one way of doing it. The advantage of this is that we can introduce another number. So let's say I introduce now 98. If we look at 98, 98 is 2 times by 49. So I could write this as 2 times by 49, or 2 times by 7 times by 7, which gives me 2 times by 7 squared. So if we look at this now, what we've got here is only 2 that is common to each list. So we take 2 and we'd have that to its lowest power. That gives us 2 to the power of 1. So we can say that the highest common factor is 2. Again, if you wanted to do this one, and you wanted to look at it like so, uh, let's do that. We could say now that looking at this list right here, we've got now the 2, the 2, and the 2, but there's nothing else that's common. So that's finding the highest common factor. The advantage of this method is that we can deal with algebraic expressions in a very similar way. If we're looking at the lowest common multiple, what we can do is pick it up from here. We look at our list and we look, and I'll take just to begin with, the lowest common multiple of 36 and 42, the first number they go into. We look at all of the numbers we have in the two lists. All of the numbers are going to be a 2, a 3 and a 7. So I know it's going to be 2, 3, and a 7 involved. What we need to do is take each number to its highest power. So just dealing with above the line for now, I've got 2 to the power 1 or 2 to the power 2. I need 2 to the power of 2. I've got a choice of 3 to the power of 1 or 3 to the power of 2. I need to take 3 to the power of 2. Here I've only got 1, 7, so I take that to the power of 1. So that's going to be 4 times by 9 times by 7 which is going to give me 252. So that is the lowest common multiple. It's the first number they both go into. So I've taken each number that appears throughout the lists and raised it to its highest power. So let's now think about if we said what's the lowest common multiple of these three numbers. We can see we'd have the 2, the 3 and the 7, but this time 
we would swap this over to a squared term and we'd have to multiply this answer now by 7. That would give us now the lowest common multiple, each number that appears to its highest power. Whereas the common factor, highest common factor, we look at the numbers that appear in both lists and take them to their lowest power. So let's have a go now at looking at an alternative way that we could employ the highest common factor and lowest common multiple. And that's with algebraic expressions. So let's say I've got four, and we'll have something like four p squared, and then we'll take q cubed. And then we have 12 p, and we have q to the power of four. So these are two algebraic expressions, and we want to find the highest common factor and the lowest common multiple. If we look here, I could write now that this one is going to be 2 squared, then p squared q cubed. So 2 squared is 4 prime factored. If we have now 12, that is going to be 2 squared times by 3, so just writing this in, then we'd have p squared, then q to the power of 4. So what we need to do here is take each number for the highest common factor that appears in both of these, raise it to its lowest power. So we can see here that we're going to have a 2, we're not going to have a 3, we are going to have a P, and we are going to have a Q. So we need to the lowest power, well that's a 2. The lowest power of now P, we've got, sorry, let's just change that, that should be P, shouldn't it? Just P. Um, let's just write this back in. We're going to have now, so this is going to be q cubed, then we've got now p, and then q to the fourth. So I need it to its lowest power, and we have, let's put the 3 back in, there we go. So we have now p, so this is going to be to the first power, and then it will be q cubed. So the highest common factor is going to be 4p q cubed. So I've looked at which now are in both lists. The 2 is, the 3 isn't, the P is, the Q isn't. We put all of those in, we multiply them, and we have now the lowest power. Let's now look at the lowest common multiple. So this is the highest common factor of that algebraic expression. This is the lowest common multiple. So if I take my list here, I've got 2 squared, P squared, Q cubed. Then I've got 2 squared times by 3, P and then we're going to have q to the power of 4. We need each number or algebraic term to appear in my list. So we're going to have 2 times by 3 times by p times by q. We need to take each of these to their highest power. So we know that's going to be a squared term. This will be 3 to the power of 1, p squared, q to the power of 4. So that's going to give me 12 p squared, q to the power of of four, and that is the lowest common multiple. So that's one way of doing it. Um, it's an option for you, entirely up to you. Let's look at an alternative way of uh, viewing the lowest common multiple and highest common factor using a Venn diagram. So if we take now 36 and 42, so that's what we had before, and we write out these as a product of prime factors, then what we'd have was 2 times by 2 times by 3 times by 3. And then we're going to have now 2 times by 3 times by 7. So for a couple of numbers, this approach is quite nice if you want to use it. I personally don't, but it's an option for you. So what we're going to have is a Venn diagram. So let's put a Venn diagram on and we'll put one of these. So let's have that just there. And then we'll have that just there. So here's my Venn diagram. What I'm going to have now is the number 36. So let's have 36 here. So 36 is here and 42 is here. What I'm going to do is put the ones that are common in the middle. So I can put these two in the middle as two. I can put now the three, this three with this three in the middle and we'll have three. All that leaves me here now is the 2 and the 3 in the 36, and it leaves me the 7 in the 42. The highest common factor is the intersection. So with that intersection, we can say that the highest common factor is going to be 2 times by 3. 
and the lowest common multiple is simply going to be all of the numbers multiplied. So it's going to be 2 times by 2 times by 3 times by 3 times by 7. So we can see that this is going to give us now 6 and this is going to give us 4 times by 9 times by 7 which is the 252 we found earlier. So as you can see, if you've got a couple of numbers, this is quite a nice approach. Um, if we wanted to introduce a third, we could do. That is an option, uh, but I think it's quite laborious. So let's go back to this idea, highest common factor and lowest common multiple. Highest common factor is the largest number that goes into two or more numbers. We can do this by prime factoring. We look at the numbers that appear in both lists, we write them out, and we take them to the lowest power. With the lowest common multiple, we look at all of the numbers that appear in both lists, we write them out and take them to their highest power. So if you're doing um, a lower level course, the first method that we looked at is perfectly fine. For small numbers, list them out. For larger numbers and algebraic expressions, this method is an alternative.